was there something that was bothering him that he especially thought he could contribute or work on? Well, of course, we can't go back and talk to him, but we do have these student notebooks. There's two of them. One's called the Philosophical Questions, and the other is called the Waste Book. The Philosophical Questions has discussions of the nature of reality and various issues concerning it, and the Waste Book has things that have to do with motion in various ways, what happens in collisions and things of that sort. And it's a complicated story. But what's among the things that I think are interesting is he took notes in the philosophical questions on stuff that was traditionally uh, given to you in the curriculums going back several hundred years, namely on what uh, scholars refer to as scholastic or neo-scholastic ways of thinking about the world dating back to the reformulation of Aristotle in the Middle Ages by Thomas Aquinas in the church. And this is a totally different way of thinking about things, which actually connects to something we were saying a moment ago. For instance, um, uh, so I'm wearing a blue shirt, and I will sometimes ask students, where is the blue? And they'll usually say, it's in your shirt. And then some of them get clever and they say, well, no, you know, light is striking it. Photons are re-emitted. They strike the back of your retina and et cetera, et cetera. And I said, yes, you, what that means is that the blue is actually an artifact of our perceptual system considered as the percept of blue. Mm -hmm. It's not out there. It's in here. Yep. Right? That's not how things were thought about well into the 16th century. The general notion, dating back even to Aristotelian antiquity and formalized by the 12th century uh, at the Paris, uh, Oxford, and elsewhere, is that qualities are there in the world. They're not in us. We have senses, and our senses can be wrong. You know, you could go blind, things like that. But if they're working properly, you get the actual qualities of the world. Now, that break, which is occurring towards the end of the 16th century and is most visible in Descartes, uh, is the break between conceiving that the qualities of the world are very different from the qualities that we perceive. That, in fact, the qualities of the world consist almost entirely in shapes of various kinds and maybe hard particles or whatever, but not colors, not sounds, not smells, not softness and hardness. They're not in the world. They're in us. That break Newton is picking up as he reads Descartes. He's going to disagree with a lot in Descartes, but that break he is among other things, picking up very strongly. And that underlies a lot of the way he works later on when he becomes skeptical of the evidence provided by the senses. Yeah, that's that's actually, I, I don't know, the way you're describing is so powerful. It just makes, makes me realize how liberating that is as a, as a scientist, as somebody who's trying to understand reality, that our senses is just... Our senses are not to be trusted. That reality is to be investigated through tools that are beyond our senses. Yes. Or that improve our senses. Or improve our senses. In some ways. Um, That's pretty powerful. For I mean, that is, uh, for a human being, that's like Einstein level. <laughs> For be, for a human being to realize you can't tr I can't trust my own senses at the at that time. That's pretty trippy. 